Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to achieve cinematic lighting in an interior environment. Now for this example, I'll be using a car as my main subject, but you can pretty much apply this to any object you'd like. Now, to start off, I'll show you how to set up this quick interior environment, and then I'll show you my lighting setup to get that quick cinematic look. And as always, I will make this blend file available on my Patreon, except the car, but you can replace this car with any free car model you'd like. Uh, so consider checking out my Patreon and becoming a member. You get a ton of cool perks once you become a member, so consider checking that out. Without further ado, let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, let's first create a interior environment for our lighting setup. We are going to need a car model. Now you can use any car model you like. Uh, there's a ton of free options when you search for it in the Blender Kit add-on, which is free. But uh, for this tutorial, I'm gonna be using a blue BMW. So let's first hit A and X to delete everything. Then I'll import in my own car model. Again, you can use any car model you like. Let's do G and Z, let's just bring it up. A little bit and then let's do shift a and let's add in a circle and for the circle i'm going to give it about 64 vertices and then i am going to go into edit mode i'm going to hit f to give it a face in the middle and then i'm going to go into top view and i'm just going to hit s and i'm going to scale it to the proportion of my car okay and then i'm going to go to face select mode and then i'm gonna hit e to extrude and then i'm going to hit i to inset and then i'll make another face like this and then i'll hit e to extrude again and then i'll hit s to bring it in a bit and then i'll hit i to make another face and then finally i'll hit e to extrude once again s okay nice and then I'll bring my car model back on the platform. And I'll do R and Z and I'll just rotate it a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna click my platform and then I'll just add in a material. Let's just first hit auto shade smooth and then let's add in a bevel modifier. And the bevel is gonna be out of like four segments and the bevel is not gonna be too much. It's gonna be like 0.003. I'll go hit Z and go into material preview. And then I'll select the platform. I'll rename it by hitting F2 to platform. And then I will go to materials and I'll just give it a metallic material a little bit. And then I'll decrease the roughness. Next, I'm gonna create three LED panels for some backlighting. So let's do shift A, add in a plane and let's do RX 90, enter, RZ 90, enter. And then let's go G and then Z, bring it up. Let's do S and then Y. Like this. They're gonna be pretty large LED panels. I'll hit, I'll go into edit mode and then I'll select this face here. I'll go E, extrude a little bit. And then I'm gonna go back to edit mode. I'll select the first face here, hit I. And I'll add in like a slight face, just like a slight one. And then E to extrude a little, just a little bit. And then I'll move it back, back here. Next, I am going to, uh, I'm gonna hit shift and then S and bring cursor to selected. And then I'll do shift A and I'll add in another cube. And this will be the, go back to solid view. This will be the thing that holds up the LED. So let's do S and then we'll do shift Z. We'll scale it like this, S shift Z. And we'll have it like slightly touch the screen. And then we'll just hit S and then Z and skill it up. And we'll move it up. And then we'll select the screen. We'll hit new material, material preview. And then let's just give it a metallic material, make it dark, roughness, a little low. And then let's go into edit mode and select the inside face. Let's add in a new material slot, hit new. And then for this, I'm going to add in an image texture. So to do that, let's just go, let's make a new window by going to the top right corner and dragging over like this. Let's go to the shader editor, hit N, and then hit Shift A, add in an image texture. 
this and then connect that to the base color. For the image texture, I'm going to be using a video of a sky. So to find free videos, so to find free videos, you could search for them on pixels.com. Switch to videos and then just type in sky. And then you can use any one you feel like. It's uh, entirely up to you. So once you download one of these sky textures here by hitting free download, then go back to Blender. Let's hit open and let's search for the sky texture. Sometimes some might not work. So for, for example, this one, I don't know why it's not working. So I tried this one and it just ends up working. So um, let's just hit frames. Let's go to first. We are going to switch our render engine to cycles. Uh, GPU, if you have a GPU, we'll go into rendered mode. For the frames, let's do like 300 and let's do cyclic auto refresh. And for the repeat, it's going to be clip. And so now uh, while you're on the second material slot, hit assign and you should see the video playing here now. It's a little dark. So to increase that, let's just go to emission and let's plug in our color into the emission. Let's increase the strength to like one, which is making it very bright. And let's make the world color all the way dark. I want a little more color here. So let's do shift A, add in a hue and saturation node and plug it in between the emission and image texture like this. And then we'll increase the saturation to like two. Let's decrease the value to like 0.6. Now let's, uh, let's go back to solid view. Let's select this. Let's also give it a material, hit new, give it a metallic and uh, it really doesn't matter for this. All right, let's select this and then this with shift, hit control J, we'll join them. And then let's go to this view right here and let's just duplicate them. So let's do, let's do shift D, then Y, move it here and do R and then Z. Well, we'll just rotate it a little bit. Yeah. And, we and, we and, we and let's now, if you go into render view, it's already looking pretty moody, but we can do a lot more. So let's go back to solid view and let's add in a plane. So let's, so let's do shift S cursor to world origin, then do shift A, add in a plane, hit S and then eight on your keyboard and then a S and three and hit enter. And then let's just hit, let's go to edit mode. Let's go into this edge select mode. Select this edge, hit E and then Z and scroll up. And we also want to give it that material as well. Now we need a camera. So let's hit shift A. Let's add in our camera. Let's go view and let's go into active camera and let's just adjust it. So let's move it up using the transformation settings and we'll move it. You know what you could do? You can also hit shift and then this button on your keyboard and you can control it with your keyboard now. So I'm just going to move it back. So here. And let's, let's uh, go into our output properties and make sure render region is checked. So we only see what's in the box. Let's go back to render mode and let's select our camera, go to the camera properties and we'll switch the focal length to like 30. Ooh. Okay. 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 So looking pretty cool. We'll move the camera like directly in the center. So let's do, we'll actually move it down a little bit and we'll move the camera up and this will be 90. Let's do 35 millimeters. Nice. So now you have like a basic interior scene setup. And now I want to show you how to light this to get that cinematic look. Now we already have a cinematic look going. We need more light to shine on the subject. Usually when people light their objects, they usually hit shift a, they'll add in like an area light and then they'll bring it up and then they'll bring it directly in front of their subject. They'll shine the light directly in front of their subject like this. But here's the problem. Like it's just, in my opinion, shining light in directly in front of your subject, it's just so boring. I, I do not like doing it. I would rather do this instead. So instead of doing this, let's delete that area light and let's do shift A and let's add in a area light G and Z. Let's bring it up. Let's shine it directly above our subject giving it that top lighting. So let's do, let's do like 300. That's a lot. And <laughs> that's a lot of light. We can diffuse that by increasing the size to like five. You know what? This needs some diffusion. So instead of let's 
move it out outside the camera view and let's add in a diffusion. So let's do shift S cursor to selected. Let's add in a plane. Let's do GZ, put it under, put it under the light S five. Let's scale it down, scale it down a bit. And then let's go to the side here, give it a new material. We'll delete this. Let's do shift A. Let's add in a translucent material and shift A and let's add in a diffuse. And to mix these, we'll do shift A, do a mix shader, which will mix the two together. We'll make the color like a little more whitish. And now if you go back to render mode, the light is diffused a bit. Now the floor, I don't like the floor material. So let's go click on the floor and let's change the material on it. So let's make it more, let's decrease the roughness and let's increase the metallic like this. And let's make it dark as well. Yeah. And so there's a bit more light on the car, but not too much. And it's softened out by the diffuser here. So this is the diffuser, which, which cinematographers will use in real life to diffuse their light. So it's less harsh on the subject. So let's just rename it to diffuser. And we can also name the material here. Let's rename it to diffuser. Let's add in another light. So again, I don't want to light my subject from the front but we can light it from the side. Let's duplicate this by hitting Shift D. Let's move it to the side. Let's do R, Y, or X. See what that looks like. Yeah. Maybe a bit behind. And we'll make it like 200. It's a bit too harsher. So I'm gonna add in a diffuser in front of it. So again, let's just hit Shift S, cursor to select it, and then we'll do Shift A. Add in a plane, and for the material, let's just change it to let's search for the diffuser, right here, there. Let's see what that looks like in rendered mode. Yeah, a little more softer. Let's just move them back. Actually, let's move them back. If you want, you can attach the diffuser to the light. So let's click the diffuser and then shift click the light, control P, parent it to object. So now if you move the light, the diffuser will move with it. And if you don't want the diffuser, you can just hit H to hide it, but make sure you hide it here as well. So to properly hide it here, you want to switch this on and then uh, it's under the area light right here. So right here, and then you can just turn it off like this if you don't want it, but I'm going to keep it on to add some animation. We can actually select our platform, attach it to the car rig, hit control P, parent it. And now let's select the car rig and let's do, let's go into rotation, add a keyframe. Let's just go to like frame, I don't know, 72. And we'll rotate the entire platform like this and add a keyframe. So now it's like rotating. And I think you get a pretty cinematic look like this. And to animate the light turning on here, let's just go to frame 65 on your timeline. Let's change the power to zero, hit enter, and then add in a keyframe. And then let's go three frames ahead. One, two, three. And then on frame 68, we'll bump up the power to 800 and then add in a keyframe. And now you'll have the light turn on instead of having it on the entire time. Also, if you want to learn how I did that close up shot with the light gliding across the car, I covered that in the extended cut of this tutorial on my Patreon. So if you're interested, check out my Patreon and become a member and you'll get a ton of cool exclusive perks, including tutorial project files and a ton of other cool perks. Please give this video a like and hit that subscribe button for more tutorials like this. I will see you all in the next one. Peace.